Welcome to The Bow Show, the home of faith, family, and freedom. Art can loosely be defined as the expression or application of human creative skill and imagination, typically in a visual form such as painting or sculpture, producing works to be appreciated primarily for their beauty or emotional power. It can also be defined as the various branches of creative activity, such as painting, music, literature, and dance. By virtue of this definition, creativity and imagination are the catalysts, which means that art can be defined in terms of its creator, which is both highly individual and subjective. Also, the interpretation of that art has a subjective quality to it as well. That means that the limits of the form are essentially endless. What I define as art, you might not, and vice versa. That also means that if I say I'm a painter, you might say, well, you need a canvas. But what if I say, no, 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 my materials are on concrete or wood? Music has been generally defined as organized sound, but that is wildly interpretive. Modern composers like John Cage and Steve Reich pushed the boundaries of how sound was organized, including a piece by Cage called 433, which is four minutes and 33 seconds. The score instructs instrumentalists not to play their instruments, but instead to listen to the sounds of the environment in that four minutes and 33 seconds. He described this auditory experience as a new form of music. Can we say that the four plus minutes of silence or the occasional <coughs> cough is music? That is why art has this wide variety of interpretation and subjectivity. What is inclusive about it is that an artist created it and another person or persons experiences it. Once you start toying with the parameters or necessary tools, it will confine the artist and thus the art itself. If you tell a painter he or she must use a brush and not a pencil, or you tell a musician to use a flute instead of an oboe, you have constricted that artist and removed the entire ability to imagine and create. You cannot tell an artist what he or she must have to create their art. It will kill it. Art cannot be restricted or restrictive. To maintain its intended effect, it has to be unconstrained and free of impediment. Well, Art in 2023 is becoming constricted. It is losing its universally creative quality in the postmodern era. It has gone from create whatever you feel to create whatever we feel is acceptable. Rather than focusing on the artistic process and letting the laboratory of ideas work itself out, it has become about the end result, confining the artistic output to a desired end game. At the recent Tony Awards, two non-binary actors won awards for their respective shows. But the question is, were those actors the best in their respective roles, or were they chosen because of their identities, which seem to jive with a modern pulse in gender expression? Well, this seems to be a question asked of art itself, or at least the gatekeepers of some art. Actor Richard Dreyfus, the notable actor from Jaws, American Graffiti, Mr. Holland's Opus, and The Goodbye Girl, recently interviewed with Margaret Hoover on PBS. And some things that he said caught my attention in terms of the state of art. Listen to this. Starting in 2024, films will be required to meet new inclusion standards um, to be eligible for the Academy Awards for Best Picture. They'll have to have a certain percentage of actors or crew from underrepresented racial and ethnic groups. What do you think of these new inclusion standards for films? They make me vomit. Why? Because this is an art form. It's also a, a form of commerce and it makes money, but it's an art. And no one should be telling me as an artist, that I have to give in to the latest, most current idea of what morality is. And what are we risking? Are we really risking hurting people's feelings? You can't legislate that. 
And you have to let life be life. And I'm sorry, I don't think that there's a minority or a majority in the country that has to be catered to like that. Yeah. You know, Laurence Olivier mm. was the last white actor to play Othello. And he did it in 1965. And he did it in blackface. And he played a black man brilliantly. Am I being told that I will never have a chance to play a black man? Is someone else being told that if they're not Jewish, they shouldn't play the Merchant mm -hmm. of Venice? Mm -hmm. Are we crazy? Do we not know that art is art? This is so patronizing. It's so, it's so thoughtless and, and, and treating people like children. Dreyfus makes some excellent points about where art has gone. The inclusion standards are hampering the artistic process. Yes, it is commercial, but it is an art form. And artists are now being told what to do, and it has a moral tone to it. Because wokeness has infected Hollywood and Broadway alike, there are now inclusion standards. And the art cannot be heralded if it does not have those certain basic quotas. So no matter what project you are creating, whether it is about the Wright Brothers' first flight, a World War II drama, or a British art house film, it's going to have to cater to certain minorities. I've already seen this in practice. In the breakdowns for casting of various films and Broadway projects, many non-binary and actors of color are being sought and strongly encouraged to apply. This means that someone like me will be considered dead last, no matter how well I play the role or how well I sing. I will be considered last because of no fault of my own. Now, am I a victim and am I going to play that card? No. I just think that their ideas are stupid, but more importantly, stupid for art's sake and what it represents. They are making art dishonestly, and that is detrimental to the form itself. Dreyfus went on to say this. You know, I once worked for a guy uh, who was making a film about the gangsters of the 30s. And I said, why did you change this incident and that incident from the reality? Because the reality was so much more interesting than what you created. And you, by changing it, you made it simple and smaller. And I totally believe that you can make a great film or a great painting or a great opera out of the truth yeah. first and, and, tr and, and try that first. And then if you can't do it, then make up some nonsense. But don't, don't tell me you can't do that, that history isn't that interesting. Final question. In 2020, you said, quote, I don't go to a lot of movies anymore because I don't like them. They're not very good anymore. And I probably have missed out on a bunch of really good films, but they're mostly crap. Why do you think modern films are mostly crap? Because we're going through this uh, uh, strange need to not create, but to create sequels. Sequels are death. <laughs> sequels are like, well, or there was a sequel to Jaws. But there wasn't, Other no movies. sequel, no, not, never, <laughs> never came close to the brilliance of the first Jaws. Yeah. And I'm very proud of that yeah. and well, very happy about it. I thank it. you for my phobia of sharks for my entire life. Me too. <laughs> I admit it. I won't go in. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm the same way. <laughs> but I tell you, it's one, it's one thing to be around a generation of people who went for it who risked it, who said, let's, let's go for it. And they did, and they made great films. Ah, see, there's the rub. It has to be honest. It has to tell the truth. It has to take risks. 
I think Dreyfus reminded me a lot of what Dr. Jordan Peterson has said about truth. He said that you have to be willing to be offended to obtain any truth. The truth is going to hurt sometimes, but if you are honest in your storytelling, then you will be better off. You can't be offended by everything. That's no way to live. We can't have bubble wrap everywhere we go. But now that art is adding in this bubble wrap, it is changing the way that the story is told. It is confining the way the artist can tell the story. Dreyfus went on to connect the way civics are taught today and makes this parallel that if we don't give students the honesty of history, we are shortchanging them for the future. And you know, that's also true of artists. If we don't give artists the liberty to create without hindrance, then we will change their creativity. If we tell them that they must have this or that, or the art must portray this or that, and it must uplift this group and condemn that group, then every bit of artistic output is going to be compromised. But that's where we are. We live at a time when the National Anthem, written by Francis Scott Key, is considered racist, so that we need to add another anthem at sporting events to ensure that everyone is included. Even though the very act that inspired the Star Spangled Banner was for freedom. At a recent museum that I went to, I saw an exhibit that plainly said, end white supremacy. Okay, fine. But what about end any kind of supremacy or end any sort of racial superiority? How about end racializing everything? Keep watching at epochtv.com forward slash The Bow Show.